Hi there! Today, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your PlayStation 4 controller from the dreaded micro USB to the godly USB Type-C. This is done by fabricating and populating a brand new USB breakout board. Let's go over the necessary tools first. You'll need a decent soldering iron. I use the TS100, but anything with a flat or chisel-esque tip should suffice. For reference, I'm using the BC2 tip. Some form of hot air station or hot plate. I actually use an old clothing iron here as it gets just hot enough to melt solder. Obviously, you'll need solder to go with that. I use lead solder because it's significantly easier to work with. Additionally, solder paste is highly recommended here as we're populating surface mount components. And lastly, flux. Get flux. It helps the solder flow, especially if you're remelting a joint. You'll also need a handful of parts, which can be found under the section for each board on the GitHub repo. That'll be one flat cable connector, two or four resistors, the USB-C port, and optionally the RGB LED. Technically, all of the resistors are optional, but just add the resistors, they're like two cents each, man. A multimeter to check continuity and make sure no pins are shorted. A set of fine or precision files will also be useful, as you need to slightly modify the case on your PS4 controller to fit these boards. Type-C is a little fatter and taller than micro-USB. An iFixit toolkit makes it easy to crack open your controller, but you can also get by with a basic Phillips head screwdriver, a thin plastic card such as a gift card, driver's license, school ID, etc., and a pair of thin tip tweezers such as these from the iFixit kit. These work great to pick up and place the tiny components such as resistors that we're dealing with. Speaking of which, we need somewhere to put these components. So let's fab the board. To figure out which board you need to make, you'll have to crack open your PS4 controller by taking out the screws in the four corners, running a guitar pick or plastic card around the edges, and unclipping the two halves. Be careful with the ribbon cable, as it's especially fragile and could pull the connector off the main PCB if you're too rough with it. Then, remove the plastic pieces to get to the breakout board. Yours will likely have a screw or two holding it down. Pull the board out and flip it over. It should have a code on it starting with JDS. Mine was JDS040. Now that you know what board you have, make your way to the GitHub page and download the gerber.zip for the board that you have. Here, I'll download the 040-05x board. If your board is not a part of the repo, shoot me an email, ian at casualcoders.dev. Together, we can create the missing board. You'll need a multimeter at minimum. If you already know what you're doing, just open up KiCad and create the files, then submit them as a PR. Let's get Type-C available for every PS4 controller. Upload that file to your favorite board house. I use JLC. The biggest thing to change is PCB thickness. Use a 0.8mm board or thinner, else it won't fit. I used a 0.8mm board and it worked fine for me. I think a black mask looks best, but it will add a bit of time to your order. It may also incur an additional charge, but it doesn't appear to here. I'll also tend to use the cheapest shipping method since this project already isn't exactly the cheapest thing out there. Once you've ordered the boards, you'll need components. You'll have to shop around online for some of these components as they're a little special. I ordered my parts across eBay, Mauser, AliExpress, and so on. Ordering in packs of 10 generally brings the unit price down but will increase cost, although you could possibly reap that back by selling some of these boards. The FPC connector and USB-C connectors are both the most difficult to find. The resistors are super easy, and both Mauser and DigiKey carry the RGB LEDs. Now that we have parts and boards, let's get to assembly. The first step is solder paste. You can purchase an SMT stencil from JLC, but I skipped it. It's super easy to do the resistors by hand, but the flat cable connector is a little trickier. I generally drag a really thin strip of solder paste across all the pads and hope for the best, hence the multimeter. As long as you check to make sure none of the pins are shorted, you're good to go. I suppose if you have access to a vinyl cutter, you could possibly cut out a rectangle, effectively using that as your SMT stencil. With the paste down, we can place some components. This is easy enough with tweezers, just grab your little part and smush it into the paste on the pad. Do your best to line it up now, but they'll snap into place when you melt the solder by heating the board. Now that that's done, 
We can move on to the hot plate or clothing iron. I'm using a clothing iron here. You can find a temperature chart for clothing irons online. My solder paste melts at 135 degrees, so I'll put it in roughly that area. Other solder pastes melt at higher temperatures, such as 183 degrees. According to the table though, a clothing iron should be able to hit somewhere slightly above 210 degrees Celsius. Place the board on the middle of the iron like so, and allow the paste to melt. The components should snap into alignment, but some may need some help. Carefully use your tweezers to push the components around such that they are aligned correctly. All their feet should be touching the corresponding pads on the board, and they should be mostly square. Now, just remove the board from the heat using your tweezers and allow it to cool. Congratulations, you've populated an SMT board. Use the ribbon cable that came with your controller and the multimeter to ensure no pads are shorted together. If they are, you can add flux to the pins of the FPC connector and reheat the board. Reflow the solder and try to break the bridge. You may also be able to use a pin or something for this. If there's still too much solder, you may have overdone the paste. If that's the case, you can start over, since you have five boards, or reheat the board, remove the FPC connector, and use your iron or some solder wick to remove the excess solder. If you put in a bit of time, you should be able to fix the board and make it work. Next, the USB-C connector. This part can be a little tricky, but it's still doable by hand. You'll need the soldering iron, your Type-C port, and some flux for this. I taped the board to my desk when I was doing this. Set the Type-C port on the PCB and in its little through holes. Then, place some solder by the pins of the USB-C connector. Now run the iron across the pins and spread out the molten solder. You'll likely bridge some pins here, but that's okay. Just get everything connected, but try not to use too much solder. You can then wipe using the iron to pull the excess solder down off the pins or across and to the left and right. Don't be afraid to cover the pins in a ton of flux to help you with this. The flux will help the solder flow and can help the bridges separate. Once you're happy with the USB-C connector's pins, try to check it with the multimeter. Make sure none of your pins are shorted using the pictures of the PCB and the schematic as a guide. Note that there are two data positive and two data negative pads that are tied together. This gives you the flippability of USB Type-C. Once you've verified that all of your connections look good, you can install it in your PS4 controller and test it. To test, I'd simply connect the ribbon cable and leave the controller open. Use either Steam or your PS4 to verify. I'm sure there's some functionality in the PS4 to verify, though I don't actually own one. Make sure everything charges, and double check that the LED functions if you chose to add one. All that's left is to file the opening of the PS4 controller to allow the Type-C port to fit and reassemble it. There you have it. One PS4 controller that has USB Type-C. Now I know there are probably some people out there who really want to benefit from this, but don't want to make these themselves. If there's enough interest, I can see about opening up a Tindy shop or something similar and selling these. So if you're interested in something like that, please leave a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching. Feel free to stick around because we're probably doing more cool things like this in the future. That moment when you're using a normal camera meant to be used for videoing as a electron microscope in order to see if your stuff is soldering. <laughs> and it looks good, yeah.